I'm never doing back to back marathon. A little bit of a different story this time around at the New York City Marathon. If you came from my Chicago Marathon video where I went sub three, this is the peak of my marathon career. And then four weeks later, straight to the bottom again. <laughs> I had high hopes that I would be able to perform at this marathon, at least similarly, maybe go sub three again. I was so far off. And a lot of that had to do with the weather. Not making any excuses, I definitely didn't perform well, but I just wanna give a recap of the entire race weekend, how awesome it is to experience the New York City Marathon. So as all destination marathons go, I obviously wanted to give myself enough buffer by going to New York on Friday with the Sunday race in case there was any delays or anything. All right, our flight got delayed three hours. So instead of doing my run in New York, once we get there, I'm doing it now while we wait by the airport. <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave these clothes in my car, put on a lot of deodorant and go to New York. So we could just go to sleep tonight because tonight's the most important night of sleep on Friday. Instead of getting my run in that evening, uh, I decided to just run next to the airport in Chicago. <laughs> The flight time kept changing, so we sat down to eat, and then we were uh, promptly directed that our flight was going to be leaving in 20 minutes. So we sprinted through the airport to get to our gate, and then had to wait another hour and a half till we boarded. <laughs> Not the best start to the trip, but everything from there was really smooth. We flew into LaGuardia that evening. We flew over Manhattan, and I got this footage of the New York City Marathon finish line lit up at night. It was wild to see it from the plane because I knew that the opening ceremonies were happening that night. Very cool way to be introduced to the, uh, the running weekend. So we crashed that night. I wanted to get as much sleep as I could because I know that night is the most important sleep before a race. The next day we slept in, super chill, went and got bagels, and I decided kind of on a whim, you know what, I'm just gonna do my shakeout run now. I'm in all my running gear, so my wife graciously stood in line to get bagels, and I went out and did three and a half miles on a shakeout run, where I tested the new GoPro that I was gonna be carrying for the entire race. So the real reason Eric brought me on this trip is so I could get him all stand his food while he does stand whatever he wants. Hey, I got you Rolos, I got you the vanilla ice latte. I was trying to butter you up before, <laughs> make you stand in line. Before the work begins. And that's where I really came to grips with how humid it was that weekend. I took that run fairly easy and I was a sweaty hot mess after and my heart rate was much higher at that pace than it normally is. So at a 7.35 pace, my uh, heart rate spiked all the way up to the high 150s, whereas in training prior to that, I wasn't even breaking into the 150s around that pace. I was actually running some training runs in the week, two weeks before at 715, 720 pace at low 150s or high 140s. So I started to realize like how intense the race was probably going to be the next day, but I kept just putting that to the back of my mind and not thinking about it too much. So we went over to the expo and Josh and Tina went with us. This is the expo, this entire place. Just an incredible expo, like everything you could imagine or want at an expo. I finally splurged and got a jacket, um, and I'm very happy I did the black and white 2022 NYC marathon jacket. This is it. This <laughs> is what I'm getting. We perused the expo. I ran into Joe Hale and Kevin, um, who had photographed me in Chicago, and they were there with TCS again. So it was nice to actually have a couple minutes to talk to them instead of just like a few seconds, which have been like all of our interactions this year so far. It's just really sweet to start getting a lot more connected to the running community, especially the intersection of me being a photographer and filmmaker with the creatives in the running world. Super cool. Then I had a really bomb lunch at the expo. It was like this uh, rice bowl with, I don't even remember what it was. It was like a Jamaican style rice bowl, I think, um, but had tons of carbs in it. That was the most important thing. Uh, I think it had sweet potato and beans and rice and chicken. It was really, really good. Lots of food. So in the spirit of keeping things chill, instead of me going to the finish line and going and seeing Central Park, I decided to just go shopping with Sabria, my wife, and uh, just kind of settle down, go to Whole Foods, get our meal for the night, um, which was whole wheat pasta and chicken. And then we got sourdough toast, sourdough bread uh, that we turned into toast and uh, then sweet potatoes as well. So we got in at a reasonable time Saturday night, probably about seven o'clock. Um, I ate all the way until 8.30 and was in bed chilling by nine o'clock, getting everything prepped, uh, all of my kit prepped and ready to go for the next day, laying everything out, making sure I had it all set to go. 
and it was daylight savings or whatever day it was where you get one more hour of sleep and uh, yeah, woke up at four o'clock the next morning. I positioned myself very strategically with my Airbnb. I stayed at Sonder in lower Manhattan. It was only about a four block walk to the Staten Island Ferry, which I would be boarding at 5.30 a.m. So that morning I did a two slices of sourdough with peanut butter and bananas and loaded up on another full 20 ounce bottle of liquid IV. Extra banana. Going for low 70s and 84% humidity. <laughs> and then I brought a water bottle with me to the start. I actually didn't bring a water bottle. That's probably why I did such a bad job. <laughs> There's plenty of water at the starting village, so I wasn't too worried about that. Ran into my buddy Jack, uh, who has a TikTok channel called Public Opinion, and they interviewed me right away, which was super fun. Him and his buddy Henry, who owned that company. Then his buddy Tom, who I'd run with before, uh, with Jack. And Tom is just an absolute animal. I'm trying to go for sub 2.30 that day. Didn't go in his favor, but he still ran a 2.44, which is really, really sick. <laughs> And then we just hung out in Starters Village for like two hours. And it was so nice just to chill out. Pro tip, Tom and Jack grabbed clothes that were already in the donation bin and we pulled them out and actually put them on the ground and sat on them. Just kind of as like a little blanket, little bed. <laughs> we used the porta potty like three times. Uh, I loaded up on a bunch more water and uh, got all my gels and everything situated in my pockets and tossed my starter bag. Said goodbye to Jack as I headed to my corral. I was in corral D in the first wave. And this time I was running up over the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which I didn't the year prior. I ran on the underside. So it was cool to experience the top side this time. It's hard to put into words how electric the starting line is at the New York City Marathon with the helicopters flying over and the cannons blasting and Frank Sinatra playing on the loudspeakers and all of the people. Suffice to say, it's one of the coolest experiences you'll ever experience in life. As the race started, I was positioned in like the 310 group and I was really aiming to go sub three again. So it was this really uncomfortable push to try to get ahead in that first mile. I was trying to relax, trying to keep it chill as much, much as possible, but also trying to work my way up in the crowd. So I was dodging a lot of people and zigzagging through the crowd, which wasn't an incredible way to start. Ended up clocking that mile at about 7.20. Um, but then it opened up at the top of the bridge and I just kind of let it loose on the downhill. It probably let it loose way too much because I think I clocked a 6.15 on the way down, which was really stupid. As soon as I got into Brooklyn off the bridge, I knew right away how hot of a day it was. I was already sweating through my tank and I could tell everyone else around me was starting to feel the heat as well. Almost through 5K here. It's hot. I'm feeling it. It's been an interesting day. I'm gonna probably chill out a little bit. I'm on 640, 645 now. Try to settle in. Here we go, 5K. I think all of us in our heads were like, okay, this is gonna be a really long day. But I still felt pretty good. I was on purpose not checking my heart rate because I knew it was probably gonna be in the 160s and psychologically that was gonna mess me up. But I was just trying to have a good time, stay within the 645 to 650 range per mile see how good I felt for as long as I could and take a bunch of clips to just soak in the experience and uh, let you guys see it all. I ran into a few internet friends at mile eight, which was super cool. Got this footage of rounding the corner in Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn. As soon as I rounded that corner, um, headed up that hill deeper into Brooklyn to mile nine. I, I remember last year that that was the first time I started feeling it and this year was no different, it actually felt worse. This was the, the first time I started to feel my pace slip and I was getting up into the high sixes, approaching seven minutes per mile. And that's where I started to realize I need to really dial it back now if I want to survive in this race. The heat is eating me up. Just gotta low, slow my heart rate down. Slow the pace down. Take it easy for at least five to 10 miles. If I wanna survive the last 10K. Check in, back in at half. 
here we go. I grabbed my first ice pack of the day and that felt incredible, threw it on my neck. Really started to come to grips that this wasn't going to be the day I wanted, but I was gonna keep pushing myself at least to the halfway point because <laughs> by mile 10, I was already starting to feel like I wanted to walk, which sucks because I've never felt that bad that early in a marathon before. So I pushed myself, I said I wasn't going to walk until the halfway point and I feel like once you start to negotiate with yourself on when you're going to walk, that's never a good place to be mentally because you're already telling yourself you're going to walk. I decided right after the halfway point, which I clocked a decent half split of like 131, 33, I think. As soon as I crossed that halfway point, I started walking. In This heat is no joke. Oh man, 178 BPM. There goes 305. This is what it is. All right, down to 150 now. As I hit this downhill, I'll keep going. Try to hold on for as long as I can. My heart rate was like all the way up into the 170s, touching 180. My heart rate never gets that high in race conditions. So I knew it was probably best just to chill out a little bit, try to get the heart rate down and find a new rhythm. But I have this issue and this problem with psychologically that I just don't allow myself to run a slower pace than I ever train at. I never train slower than like an 815 pace. And so for some reason, I always just run that even if I'm dead tired, which causes me to walk, run back and forth the entire second half of a marathon like this, which honestly seems stupid. I'd probably be more efficient by just running a nine minute pace for the entirety of the race from that point on. Hindsight's 2020, 20, I guess. <laughs> so I'm struggling through mile 14 in Queens. I picked it up for another mile and a half, stopped and walked again before the Queensboro Bridge, ran onto the Queensboro Bridge and quickly started walking again, ran the entirety of the downhill section of it, grabbed another ice pack and headed out to First Avenue. By the time mile 17 rolled around, I was pretty much fully cooked. And I remember at that point, that was the point in 2021 race where I really started to feel it, um, but even more so this year. The highlight of this moment was that I started to hear Casey being chanted in the crowd and <laughs> quickly realized I looked to my left or looked to my right and uh, Casey Neistat was just right behind me. And so I started filming him with my GoPro because I knew he uh, put out an ask the day before on Twitter to get footage of him running the New York City Marathon. Got some cool footage of him uh, and then just sort of moved on from there. He had a brutal day as well, it seemed. So I got up to mile 18 and 19, a bunch of walk running, and I started taking more ice packs um, every time I got the option to grab one. Putting it on my neck, putting it on my face, and then I started eating the ice and drinking out of the ice pack, which weirdly enough, just like, I don't know, it felt like it soothed me. <laughs> yeah, the ice packs just felt like a lifesaver the rest of the race. I, I, I never didn't have one in my hand from that point on. Up going over, I believe it's the Willis Bridge, I can't remember which one it is, the one going into mile 20, walking up that. One more hour of suffering. Jogging the downhill of that, crossing mile 20 into the Bronx. Just a whole bunch of run walking again, but once I passed the Bronx Boogie Down Runner group, um, that was just so fun to experience a crowd going that nuts, and I, of course I had to film that, and um, get a little bit of hype and remember that this is still fun. Um, so the rest of the race, I was just trying to do math in my head of like 3.30 started to slip away. And I think at that point I was just like, just don't go over 3.40, try to get under 3.40. And uh, yeah, there really isn't much more to say from that point on. It was just a whole bunch of walk running all the way up through the 20s, mile 22, 23 is the huge hill on Fifth Avenue, which I did a whole lot of walking on. Um, finally saw my friends and my wife, and uh, that was a really fun moment to finally see them. Uh, we missed each other in the first two spots earlier in the course, which same exact thing happened the year prior. Uh, but got into Central Park, saw some more internet friends that took my photos, and those were really, really funny <laughs> photos. <laughs> Me drinking out of the ice pack and looking like a zombie. But then I saw Hella Sadibe at like mile 25. He was up on one of the stumps, and uh, like he was last year, and I, congrats to Hella. If you're seeing this, congrats, Hella, for 2000 days straight, it's an insane feat. From that point on, I was trying to, again, negotiate with myself, like, no more walking, and I just literally couldn't stop myself from walking. I was so exhausted, my heart rate was so high. I crossed the finish line, and 
Uh, right away, my buddy Joe Hale started photographing me and I told him I'm never running back-to-back -back marathons again. And really what I'm taking away from this experience is I just learned a ton of hard lessons. If there's ever a race like this that's this humid again, I know that I really need to let go of any semblance of a PR attempt. Unless I'm in crazy good shape in comparison to years prior. Starting way slower. More than that, just having the mental attitude of, okay, even if you do have to dip off pace, like really slow your pace down so you don't have to walk. You don't have to force yourself to walk. Have the mental fortitude to recognize you don't, you don't need to stop. You can slow down and just run a pace that even if it does feel humiliating to you, like that is going to be more efficient for you throughout the rest of the race. I did take gels on the first, you know, right before the race, mile four and mile eight. But as soon as I started feeling nauseous at mile 10 all the way through the half, I abandoned taking more nutrients because I knew as soon as I put it in my mouth, I was just gonna throw it up. Like there was no, there was no chance. And so because of that as well, I couldn't get nutrition in my body the whole second half of the race. And because of that, I knew I was totally depleted on glycogen, running off of fat instead. And that's just never a good sign. You're always going to be super slow when that happens. Tons of lessons learned, but still an incredible experience. It's it's never going to be boring running the New York City Marathon, no matter what the circumstance is, but I know it was a suffer fest for everyone out there, and if you did finish, congrats to you. Way to stick it out and get that medal. But until next year, I'm gonna have to start thinking strategically about what I wanna do next year, and I think it's gonna have to be one in the spring and one in the fall. Hopefully it's Chicago again in the fall, and I can find a good race to run in the spring. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you're interested in more of this marathon journey on other races too. We'll going to be doing a lot of half marathons in the future. So yeah, if any of that's of interest to you, stick around and until the next time, Flowberg runs. Oh, and you beat Casey Neistat. Oh, I beat Casey Neistat, yeah. No big deal.